Hi, everybody. I'm Wynn. I live in Wisconsin over in Minong. And I have been a Girl Scout since 2005 when I started as a troop leader with my daughter. It's now 2020. She's in college. We both became Lifetime Girl Scouts in 2017 when she graduated. So I continue to help out the council at various events. You'll see me at Our World, Our Family, and you might see me at some adult training sometime. Girl Scouts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines asked me to shoot a short video on making the sit upon buckets. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Some of you may have seen sit upon buckets at Our World, Our Family. The last couple of years, they have actually taught a class. I don't know if that will happen this year or not. The, the toughest part about the sit upon bucket, I think, is making the lid. And it's not hard once you see it. And that's what we're going to focus on first. And then we can backtrack and talk about sourcing the buckets and decorating the buckets and, you know, whatever else. But we're going to start with actually um, making the lid for the bucket. So you're going to grab a bucket. Um, there's lots of buckets out there. I ended up sourcing a bunch of buckets from the beef jerky plant here in town when we did this project at day camp some years ago. We needed 25 buckets. I wasn't about to go to the big box store and spend $4 a bucket because I still had to buy duct tape and some OSB and blah, blah, blah. So if you're just doing a rainy day project with you and your daughter and you know, you go to Walmart and buy buckets, fine, no problem. But if you do need a larger quantity, you might want to try to source them from a local manufacturer or bar, restaurant, whatever. So, your bucket. <clears throat> um, the bucket lid, make sure if you do source them from a, a manufacturer or a restaurant bar, make sure you have the person save the lids because that's the part that you really need. And that's where we're gonna start. Um, this lid actually has a spout on the back. It came on a bucket from the DNR that had protein foam in it. And this was used to pour it out. Um, this is a, a snow melt bucket and it's got a very tight fitting lid. Um, so if you have a flat lid or if you have something that's kind of wonky, you can work with it. Fear not. You're going to want to get some uh, OSB or some plywood. Um, sometimes we choose to look around our house and see what we have that we can use for our project. Excellent idea. Excellent. However, some of the boards that you might come across in your house aren't going to work the best for this project. My husband had an old fire department plaque and I think it was oak or whatever, and he cut it for a sit-upon bucket and it fit. It was kind of high and it was also very heavy. It made my bucket very heavy. So that didn't last real long. Um, this is probably quarter inch OSB. We were at Menards a couple weeks ago and they had some already cut from a big four by eight sheet. So that's what we picked up. We've also used um, half inch OSB. I think three eighths inch is probably your best bet, but that's not always cut and ready. If you go to your lumber yard in town, you might be able to find it. And if you go to your lumber yard in town, a lot of those places will rip the boards for you. Maybe not into little squares so that you can cut, but <clears throat> they will rip it down because most of us can't haul a four by eight sheet of OSB in our suburban or our truck or whatever. Okay, so you've got your lid, put your lid on a surface and you can, you can make a template with a pencil and a piece of string. However, there's a lot of easier ways to do it too. We ended up just looking at our lid and saying, what do we have in our house that's gonna fit in the lid? 
we use the dog dish. The dog dish fits pretty well. And maybe Cheryl can get a picture of this. It's better on the white lid. So you, you're just looking for a pattern from which to put on your OSB to draw a circle with your Sharpie and cut it. You want to give um, a little bit of play in whatever you put into your lid for your for your template. This has got like a finger I can put all the way around. <clears throat> so then I'm going to take my OSB or your plywood or whatever and put that on. Take a Sharpie, draw around, take your jigsaw and cut it out. And then you'll have your wood disc. <clears throat> the thicker the disc, of course, the more weight you've got. Um, quarter inch is probably sufficient, especially if you have a, a big commercial bucket. If you do source your buckets from like a Walmart, those lids, they don't have this big ring. It's a much thinner, um, a thinner rim and the plastic itself on the top of the lid isn't quite as durable. So you might want more of a 3 8 to half inch plywood, um, or not plywood, but OSB piece, but source whatever you can. So now you've got your, um, your wood disc. The next thing you need is some foam. Um, you can buy foam, of course you can, but what fun is that, Girl Scouts? See what you can find um, in your basement, in your neighbor's basement, wherever. A lot of electronics get packaged in foam. That's one good sp um, spot to look. Old egg crates, that was what we used for our service unit um, buckets. Somebody had a couple of old foam egg crates and we used those and cut them up. Uh, you can go buy foam. The, the higher the foam, of course, the higher the lid. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this foam came from. It was in the garage. It must have been packing material for something. You can make one level of foam, you can make two levels of foam, egg crates, and I know you can't, you can't see this, you can't really see the bumpiness, but you can feel this is an egg crate underneath. Seems like there's always somebody who has one that they used to use all the time and now it's in the corner of their basement. So, and an egg crate actually um, yields quite a few discs. So that's what we did end up using um, for our service unit day camp. So get whatever sort of foam you want and put your your template on the foam and you know with a sharpie draw a circle and cut it out. I did that before Cheryl got here. So here's my foam. It doesn't have to be, if you'll notice, there's some flat spots. It doesn't have to be perfectly circular. Not at all, just like your boards. They're gonna be a little bit wonky. Maybe you're gonna be right up against the edge so you'll have a flat spot. It's okay, it's okay, it's totally forgiving. <clears throat> um, so, let me show you though. I just wanna make sure this, this particular disc was cut and we didn't cut inside of the Sharpie mark. So it doesn't fit very well. It doesn't fit at all into our, into our bucket lid. So if you're sourcing your buckets from different places, these lids aren't all universal. Make sure that you're cutting your discs to fit and you don't end up with them too big. Because if they're too big, they're too big and you really can't use them. If they're too small, it's okay because they don't have to fit super, super tight. Okay, so so these two both fit. I think I'm going to work on the um, on the white one tonight. So 
the last component of our lid, we've got the lid, we've got our OSB, we've got some foam, and then we've got the top. <clears throat> we started our adventure on sit with sit upon buckets by using flannel back tablecloths, and those work great. You know, you can go to the dollar store um, or family dollar, whatever, and you can buy tablecloths, a lot of seasonal ones, um, just some fun ones, <clears throat> and you can get pretty big swatches of fabric for three to five dollars, and you'll get lots of sit-upon bucket lids. They're waterproof to a degree. You can sit on here with a wet swimsuit, and that's okay, but I wouldn't leave it in the pouring down rain overnight and come back and expect it to just have beat it up and you know all fallen off. You're probably gonna have wet foam and, and whatever else. Um, we started with the with the flannel back tablecloths. They work really well for a large group project. After a couple of years, however, because we used our sit upon buckets so much, we started to develop some weak spots. And our tablecloths actually got a little bit of a hole in them and then the flannel kind of starts to come up and it's okay i mean they're still usable but we decided to sort of you know up our game a bit so we went to hobby lobby and bought some raincoat fabric <clears throat> the raincoat fabric isn't real cheap it's about 18 or 19 dollars a yard but it seems to hold up a whole lot better. Would I do this for my troop of 12 to 15 girls? Absolutely not. I would start with the flannel back tablecloth. And then if you decide <clears throat> you want to get a coupon, of course, for 40% off or whatever you can find and go to Hobby Lobby, they have a lot of fun prints. Um, and one yard of fabric We'll probably get you about 12, 10 or 12 sit upon bucket lids. So not too bad for cost, really. Um, if you're going to do sit upon buckets with group of kids, it's probably going to behoove you to cut your tablecloth into squares because if you don't, the kids invariably want the middle section of the tablecloth and you have a lot of wasted stuff. So, so cut your uh, tablecloth into some squares. It's just a simple layering. You need a staple gun and a drill. If you don't have a drill, a screwdriver works. This is a little more heavy duty, but you can use a staple gun that you have in your, you know, office supplies too. I think it'll probably work as long as you have some OSB. Um, one of my friends came to camp once and her husband had used some old paneling of theirs, much like what we have on the walls in our house. And it was lightweight, but it was really heavy for him to cut to, cut through and the staples wouldn't go in. It was just so hard. So your wood is probably um, the most important part of this to get right. So what you wanna do is put your tablecloth down, put your foam and put your lid just like that. And then you're just gonna bring this over and you're gonna staple it. I'm just doing one layer of foam. I don't like a real high seat. This doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. This is a great project for kids. Out of staples. Out of staples. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I am. Just didn't go there.
little kids are going to have difficulty probably pushing down firmly enough to get the staples to stick. You might have to help them out a bit with that. I've got one staple here that's kind of high. Staple it right Pound it down with whatever you have in the drawer. Um, make sure you've got it stapled well, but it doesn't have to be stapled like crazy. You can take your scissors and trim it a bit if you want. This one doesn't stick up too much. I trimmed my um, raincoat fabric, so it was a pretty concise little square. Okay. And then that will fit in there pretty well. Again, if your disc is too big, this is where you're going to have problems because you need it to fit flat. And you can see this one's not going to be real high. If you wanted a higher, poofier top, add another layer of foam. And the last step then is to put your lid in the middle of your bucket lid and turn it over. Grab yourself some screws and screw the lid together. I guess I should have opened these before we started the, there we go. Now, depending on how thick your board is, you might not have screws in the garage that are gonna be the right size because you don't want your screw to come up through your board and put you in the seat. I'm sorry, in your butt. <laughs> so if you have quarter inch OSB and three eighths or half inch screws, you know, there's a little bit of um, distance, shall we say, in the in the lid itself, but there's not a lot of, of uh, length there. there. There's not a lot there. So if you need to uh, If you need to, you might want to put a washer or two on top of your bucket and put your screws through that to give you that extra depth that you need. Because again, you want to grab the you want to grab the wood, but you don't want the screw to go all the way through and poke you in the butt. <clears throat> so I'm going to put, I think maybe just one, and kind of, you know. Put your screw down to your lid and go, okay, well, is that going to, yeah, I think that'll work. And again, the uh, these are half inch screws and I have a quarter inch OSB and the, the bucket itself will be a little bit, but I put a couple washers on. don't need only three or four um, screws to hold your lid together. Because it's not going anywhere. There's an indent in the lid itself that it's going to sit in. with three screws holding this together um, some of my other ones just four and again at this point you can't see that um, that spigot on the bottom this one is really flat as I was telling my friend who's shooting this um, I could have added another but I chose not to so 
there you have it. Um, decorating the rest of the bucket. Duct tape seems to be um, seems to be the medium of choice, or I don't know what you call it. Um, we have used Sharpies on buckets. The Sharpie on a white bucket um, does um, wear off and it leaves the pigment of the ink behind. We have put the Sharpie on the tape and that seems to work better. If you run your tape around the bucket, know that the bucket kind of goes down and that's just, they're not perfectly up and down. So they go down, so your tape doesn't quite line up. You can see my daughter's kind of comes up. You can make a dart in your tape if you want it perfectly straight, or you can just say, whatever, doesn't matter. The bottom of the bucket, because it's gonna be sitting in dirt a lot, the bottom of the bucket, if you put tape right down to the bottom, it's gonna get kind of shaggy after a while. No problem, you can just take it off. Um, but just know that that's going to happen. That's where, you know, you're going to be sitting in the wet grass and whatever. You can do vertical stripes if you like, up and down. At our world or family, I've seen a lot of people, they just duct tape the whole bucket. If that's what you like, go for it. I tend to like a little bit of um, white in my bucket. Depending on what your, your fabric is on top, you don't need a million different flavors of duct tape. You know, if you have three or four kinds of duct tape in your bucket, that's probably okay. You don't need a lot. Um, if you're buying supplies for troop activity, you know, get three or four kinds of duct tape, get a couple of tablecloths, get your buckets, you're good to go. <clears throat> Do, um, do be careful. We added just a little bit of bling. We added some wire to the handles and then we put some beads on the wire. Isn't that fun? And it's great, but do think about traipsing through the woods with your bucket on your way to day camp. And we're not paying attention or maybe we are and it gets caught on something and our beads go flying or our pom-poms go flying or whatever we have on our bucket may end up on the ground. So we don't want to leave anything that we're going to have to pick up. We don't want to have to have a, a bucket that's like really high maintenance. So whatever you do put on your bucket, make sure that it's secure on the handles. Make sure that whatever would fall off, you would hear, you would see, don't have it so small that it would just get um, trodden over by the next person. Um, stickers. I have used stickers on my bucket. Um, just some, you know, fun kid stickers that were in our service unit sticker box. The stickers by themselves, I think, would come off fairly quickly. So... Grab your clear duct tape and put that over the stickers. Seems to work much better. Um, I have used nail polish on the buckets. These are nail polish little polka dots. That's kind of fun. Great way to use up your nail polish. But it's going to require drying time and it's also going to require your bucket to be level. So it's nothing that's going to be done in a troop meeting. You know, it's going to take a little bit longer than that. I think that's all I have on sit upon buckets. The council does have a few handouts, um, some field notes on sit upon buckets and the actual how to put the lid together. Lots of places to get your buckets. That's in the field notes. Um, right now, we've got some six gallon buckets, which are kind of fun. They're tall. So there's a six gallon bucket. My new bucket is going to be a six gallon bucket. I'm so excited because I'm kind of a tall woman. So our bakery had four gallon buckets. Um, the 
those will work for your project probably more so for the daisy or brownie girl scout um, as you know you're more of an adult girl scout you might want a taller bucket because the ground isn't quite so far so if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to the council they've got some more information on maybe sourcing buckets um, sometimes you're going to end up with buckets that aren't real clean got some ideas in there for cleaning them up and yeah have fun with it we use our buckets a lot and you'll see them at different council events and at our world or family because they're kind of comfy to sit on so thank you for your time See you later, Girl Scouts.